फेसबुक लाइव करते कारण जिमीटे प्रचुरेकेंडर लैपटपे সোরাসিস রেকর্ডিং টা এখন অফ করে দাও পরে আবার যখন শুরু হবে একটু পরে তখন অন করে দিও আচ্ছা ইউটিউব স্ট্রিমিং টা কি এখন এটা মানে এটা বেকার স্ট্রিমিং টা হচ্ছে আমার মনে হয় যে ওটা অফ করে আবার স্টার্ট করা যায় কি হ্যাঁ এখন কি যখন স্টপ করে দেওয়া ভালো হয় দেখো সেটা গার্ডি দিয়া তরুণদা কি বলে আচ্ছা আচ্ছা ছেড়ে দাও ছেড়ে দাও हेलो Okay, I have a discussion with uh, our HOD sir. Uh, sir told me that uh, he is agreed with that proposal. So those uh, seers that requested, uh, those are waiting outside. So just follow our YouTube streaming and Facebook live. Okay, just follow. After that, after the uh, first presentation, I will uh, or we all will shift to the other platform. Uh, but uh, for the first presenter, just ask them or just request them to follow our YouTube streaming and Facebook live. 
all uh, seers for first year and second year you are requested to ask your friends to follow them our youtube streaming and facebook live okay gandhi so can we start the facebook live ha 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 start kore dao okay soikot please acha uh, sneho ji tar konika ji tumra dujon ektu leave koro sir live tale start kore dicche ha koro जयन कर না ম্যাম ওনার জায়গা আরো দুটো অন্য পার্টিসিপেন্ট জয়েন করে ফেলেছে জয়েন করে ফেলেছে অন্যরা হুম 100 টাকা সো ফিউ স্টুডেন্টস আর রিকোয়েস্টেড টু প্লিজ লিভ দিস প্ল্যাটফর্ম এন্ড জাস্ট ফলো आवर ইউটিউব স্ট্রিমিং বিকজ উই আর ওয়েটিং ফর आवर এইচওডি স্যার এন্ড উই আর नॉट এবল টু স্টার্ট आवर প্রোগ্রাম সো প্লিজ লিভ please leave few of you we are requested to please leave the meeting just follow our youtube streaming so that our hod sir can join with us that has joined okay. i'm already in okay i'm already in okay okay, okay. no one else to uh, need to leave okay sorry for the late and uh, sorry welcome. sorry for this inconvenience very sorry <laughs> okay you can start now bhargi ha ha namaskar is waiting Uh, am I audible and visible? Onuska, just wait. Wait, just wait. Onuska, let us introduce you first through uh, our guardian, madam. Okay. Who does this? Who is recording? Turn on, dear. Hello. Am I audible? Yeah. A very good afternoon to all of you. myself uh, dr karthi bhattacharya is pleased to welcome all of you on behalf of electronics and communication engineering department of a future institute of engineering and management shonatpur conducting one day webinar on life beyond engineering and interaction with our ec alumni nowadays uh, we are all uh, facing a very uncomfortable situation due to the uh, corona virus outbreak worldwide all our uh, normal lives have been disturbed uh, students uh, cannot uh, could not uh, plan their future properly because all the teaching and learning process is totally based up on on online so is the department has arranged this webinar to guide them to motivate them and to encourage them so that they can shape up their uh, career planning properly i warmly welcome to our uh, respected uh, hod sir professor dr dipankar ghosh my dear colleagues all the semester students especially a second semester and fourth semester students who have registered uh, for this afternoon session and i also uh, welcome to our uh, loving speaker miss uh, anushka banerjee uh, she is very well established uh, in her journal uh, she is very busy and it is uh, very difficult to uh, find time in big day Uh, from her busy schedule uh, but when i approached to her uh, she heartily accepted my invitation so thank you anushka uh, i welcome you but before starting i will introduce you with your junior okay so let me introduce anushka Anushka Banerjee is an ex student of ISE department of PA currently uh, she is uh, pursuing phd in ISE department at state university of new york stony brook her major is in communications and signal processing and her research work involves 
simulation and assembly of undulators at Brookhaven National Lab. Her past projects involve working on audio signal classifications, radar detection, and classification of co-lectoral polyps. Apart from academics, her hobbies include traveling, photography, reading, and watching movies. In my opinion, uh, I uh, knew Anushka for a long time. Undoubtedly, she is an intelligent student, but uh, her practice and good habits uh, make him uh, achieve her goal. Okay, so uh, she is a very, very favorite student of mine and also all for all faculties. Welcome, Anushka. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am, for this introduction. I mean, I'm already overwhelmed. So good afternoon to all of you, my dear faculty members. Uh, it's been a long time since I last met you, last, last time I spoke with you. So I thank you for this opportunity to invite me as a guest speaker. And this is the first time I'm doing it. So if I do, like if I'm wrong anywhere, kindly pardon me for those mistakes and Okay, to start with, um, I was a part of uh, VMEC for the years 2014 till 2018. Um, and currently, I am here in Stony Brook um, uh, pursuing my PhD. My major is in uh, com uh, communications and signal processing. So, and I am involved in working with insertion devices, uh, high energy physics. So these are, uh, so uh, my working location is at Brookhaven National Lab. So there I'm uh, involved in uh, calculating and simulating uh, calculations involving field calculations for undulators, um, assembling them. So the current segment which I'm working on is called SAGU, which is um, segmented adaptive uh, in vacuum uh, undulators. So yeah, and well, right now uh, I'm in California, I'm working on an internship. So, yes, uh, today's topic is life beyond engineering. I mean, well, there will be few of you who are, I mean, who are very passionate about engineering. It's um, easy as a stream. The reason why I joined EC was because unlike, I mean, I found it very unique in terms of it was conventional. It had its roots dealing with voltages, chips, and so on. And at the same time, you learn a great deal of uh, coding, right? Something which we all look forward to for our corporate careers. So yeah, um, I am probably among the fortunate few who is still pursuing her career in a subject that I have spent four years, at least four years of my undergrad. So yeah, what is PhD? I mean, to start with, there are a variety of career options for any of you. Um, you can go for like jobs, either in software or maybe managerial if you pursue management or you can pursue academics, go through the traditional line of say MTech or MS, then PhD. And after that, you have lots of options open as well. Like you might be interested in pursuing a postdoc, you might be interested in being, uh, I mean, in teaching. So those are the options or you might just be interested in pursuing research. You don't have to be like, yeah, I mean, you just join a lab and you pursue that. Uh, or if there are any of you who are not at all interested in engineering, then definitely you can follow your passion and uh, opt for other career choices. PhD, well, not yet qualified as in, not yet a doctor, but till now, like that procedure, it's kind of an everyday struggle. As in, you contemplate whether or not you want to 
carry on with your research whether or not you want to go and just join the industry but one thing i can guarantee that after several years of hard work it is worth it it is worth every bit of that struggle you go through um it is an education in itself um but yes uh, before going forward with what to expect from your career beyond btech i must say that i am fortunate to be a part of fm because the four years i mean obviously if i start making a list my parents my school there are several people who have uh, who have a great deal in what whatever i am today nothing great but whatever but the four years in fm that is what shaped my career starting from i mean if i go back in time and think about my first day in college i was extremely nervous nervous to yeah to an extent where i like just went to a lo- wrong classroom it was a senior class i think a second year class being conducted i was very nervous i didn't know if i'm at all suitable for engineering or not well i didn't get that answer yet whether or not i'm a worthy engineer but there are people like who who always had my back all the faculty members at fm they shaped me they shaped my future they shaped my career and everything college life i mean since childhood one might think movies at least gives that impression it's all about fun and all well from like since have passed those stages i can see that yes it is one of the best phase in your life you're you're grown up you're kind of independent but at the same time you don't have any responsibilities so kind of this is kind of the time when you you get the best of both the worlds you can enjoy you can but you do have like, like you're able to share a fair bit of responsibility so that's there but something we might like most of us all like tend we all tend to forget is that it's not only about fun it's not only about bunking it's not only about going out it is a very crucial stage of your life because mostly based on those four years you get to decide what what you are going to do for the approaching 10 20 years so yes for me the experience at fm i mean given a chance i will want to relive it again from classes i mean so i must see our faculty members over there they made it feel like a home so i miss those classes i have attended classes over here it's good i mean all colleges are good and everything but the concern which our teachers had for us i think that's missing and i really i really miss that and yeah after that moving on so i started applying for my phd um, i mean yeah since my third year so that's when i started applying for the exams uh, specifically gre and toefl and so this pro- this whole pr- process was for an year or so involving those exams then a phase where you had to um draft all those statement of purpose where you have to explain why you are why do you want to continue your studies and everything uh, a really tedious phase because that was something you have to you have to be proficient at while being a student while you're having your third year and fourth year courses so yeah a difficult time but then you usually get to know what is awaiting after that um by your final year so 
yeah, that's all about the procedure. Um, if you think about joining any higher studies, of course, you have gate exams back in India. But if you are thinking of pursuing your, your career abroad, uh, maybe you would like to and join certain academic internships as in this was something which uh, Gargi ma'am actually recommended like I did my internship from Indian Statistical Institute so if you are thinking about something along those lines maybe um, since you guys are in fourth semester maybe you can start applying for those as soon as possible most of you, uh, so if you are from second or fourth semester, the second semester people, I think you haven't been uh, able to like be be in person in college. This virtual mode of teaching was something which we never experienced. So I think there is kind of, um, I mean, um, like we are not on the same grounds, but I must say, I mean, all th these difficult times will be over soon and a great college life is awaiting you. A great college life in terms of important decisions, in terms of important experiences is awaiting you. So live every bit of it. And yeah, that's all about it. So... Uh, I would like to, I mean, if any of you have any questions, I can say it now because that's what I had to speak about. Uh, yes, Kunal Ghosh, I think. Uh, hello, Didi. Actually, I have uh, written some questions on my notepad. Uh, so, the first question is, did you take any formal coaching for GRE or 2FL IPS? Uh, no. So the thing with GRE and TOEFL is they are very basic skills. Uh, GRE uh, examines you for your um, basic maths and English written and reading skills. TOEFL is spoken reading, writing English skills. So that's it. Uh, for those, uh, what you need to follow, like what I did was uh, I, I, I consulted the GRE uh, books I mean, you have several guidebooks, so you just need to revise. Uh, they, you don't, you are not examined on any technical skills or anything. Like for in uh, for STEM, that is engineering field, you don't need to, to have any subjective exam. It's pure maths and English, and even those are kind of uh, class 11, 12. So, no, I mean, coaching is not mandatory, but obviously, if you think that you need it, you can go for it. But it's okay. You can do without it. And uh, I have another question. Did you apply for the fall for the spring sessions during your admissions? Okay, so yes, uh, I uh, applied for the fall session. Uh, I mean, you can apply for both. The thing with fall is in general, universal. Uh, so the curriculum is such that uh, all the entry level courses are introduced in the fall semesters. So that's why uh, it's preferable. If you um, if you apply for fall, the vacancies are high. So I mean, yeah. So you just start with everybody for spring. There are certain programs. I mean, there are several which actually allow spring ad admits, but the admit is the admits are relatively few. And yeah, so you will you you might get a tough time selecting the courses, at least for your first semester. So fall is kind of recommended. Another question is that I'm very sorry if I'm it's okay. the last question. So, uh, did you write your recipe on your own, and uh, what are, uh, are are the career counselors good for that, or should I write it write it by me? So. Well, that depends on you. Um, SOP in general, um, it's a way. I mean, it's a way where you are presenting uh, your resume in a very informal way, as you will be adding certain aspects, specifically like what were your mo what were your motivations to uh, pursue uh, higher studies and everything. So you will be mentioning all your projects, all your subjects, all your course strengths in that, but in a relatively informal way. Now, getting back to your question, uh, yes, um, you can write it yourself. I, I wrote it myself. 
uh, went over it maybe like 10 times several drafts but it's doable but if so there are several professional um i mean consultants who do it or you can just directly contact the uc the usief i think it's uh, it's there in park street so um, they do have counselors like who look into your sop who suggest changes so there are several ways to proceed with it so it is totally up to you yes any more questions Look, uh, I have one other question uh, about the alerts. About the alerts, uh, letter of recommendations. Could you just please bit, uh, explain what you did? What I did? I mean, uh, where did you get the uh, letter of recommendations? Our faculties. So they are the ones who recommend us. It's not something we do. So based on your performance, they will be the one who will be gauging your performance. And yeah, they provide you your letter of recommendations. So for that, you will have to achieve our faculty members. I remember. Uh, so for me, it was DIG sir, uh, GB ma'am, and SB sir who provided me with my recommendations. So yeah. And uh, regarding your internships, did you get any LORs from uh, from those faculties where you uh, did your internship? I mean, in ISI, probably yes. ISI Kolkata. Yes, I did. I mean, see, the thing is. doing an internship being part of a college doesn't really guarantee a letter of recommendation so it is completely up to you and your teacher your mentor or anybody so like as a student we can just go and ask for it after that it is completely up to them so yes i did get one from my internship any more question Okay. Uh, I think there is no more question. Uh, thank mm -hmm. you, Anushka, uh, for being with us uh, and uh, for your encouraging talk. But please wait for some time. Actually, it's my great pleasure that I would uh, request our HOD sir uh, to share a few words about this webinar. So, uh, sir, please uh, welcome you, sir, and please uh, share few words with us. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Gargi, uh, again, I appreciate the uh, way you have organized this webinar. It is going to be really informative to the uh, students of first and second year BTEC of uh, EC branch, and uh, I also welcome and uh, I really appreciate the presence of uh, Anushka. Uh, I have seen her after a long gap. Uh, actually. Uh, Lots of memories are with her. Uh, I have seen her growing from uh, a teenage uh, girl to right now almost an established uh, career established person. Uh, it's really uh, commendable. It's really appreciable. And uh, the hard work she had uh, done, as she had gone through, is right now is paying back to her. And uh, i hope uh, and i wish all the best uh, for her career i hope she will get her degrees phd and all in in very short period of time and uh, although anushka has chosen the destination of us there are many other destinations available uh, all over the world usa is obviously number one place to uh, go through your research work and uh, to pursue your phd and ms all but uh, other destinations like uk is one of such promising area where you can go for your further study and in a few countries of uk and uh, nearby uk and like germany and all the tuition fees are really uh, almost nil uh, Uh, germany or ireland or finland their tuition fees are almost zero so only you need to uh, earn uh, something or you need to get the scholarship for your livelihood over there like your uh, fooding lodging and uh, stay over there okay 
the tuition fee is almost nil so you can choose uh, your destinations for ms or phd uh, like usa and also canada is another very good destination singapore is nowadays as is becoming a very good destination for your ms or phd if you are thinking of uh, mba or like uh, a managerial degree uh, like pg dm and all then uh, other destinations are also available like australia and uh, new zealand uh, but for all these you need to be you need to have a plan okay right now you are in the second year or maybe in the first year but you must have a road map you must have a plan and that plan you must start executing from the very beginning okay as soon as you think of going uh, or doing something uh, beyond uh, engineering then you must plan it now okay as anushka has uh, planned uh, in her times and uh, right now she is uh, obviously achieved a lot lots of things are also waiting for her uh, lots of feathers are waiting waiting for her to be added in her crown but uh, whatever she has gone again it is all due to her hard work and i uh, recommend and i uh, i uh, also tell all of the junior in the first year and second year btech students to have a dream do hard work for uh, to make it a uh, real uh, real time experience and you will definitely will be uh, achieving the goal okay i'm not going to waste more more time because uh, a few more speakers are waiting in the in the queue so uh, i thank you thank all of you for your presence i want to thank onuska and all other speakers amit uh, koel and also uh, sham uh they will be joining us very soon so it is over to you gargi thanks thanks to hear me out okay thank you thank you sir uh, for your valuable suggestions i uh, hope our students will uh, definitely follow you and uh, thank you once again anushka uh, i am very sorry again to disturb you in the midnight uh, so uh, good night to you if you want to stay with us you can easily stay but to tomorrow you have to join your office uh, so if you want you can leave and uh, very very thank you once again excuse me ma'am uh, excuse me if you yes, uh, if you please permit me for a minute i want to share one important memory with onushka uh, yes, yes, which, uh, actually uh, yeah uh, thank thank you ma'am for this uh, opportunity to giving me something to share with uh, with the audience about onushka i think onushka you have remembered that semester okay uh, that that was a uh, what i say i uh, right now i am not finding any words to express that incident but uh, uh, so i want to share with the audience Uh, probably onushka that was fifth sem i hope so third semester third sem yeah so in the third semester uh, onushka has no uh, she has not reached the above 90% marks and uh, she came to me and uh, just uh, told me sir i have not uh, earned above 90% so i just uh, uh, give uh, give her that uh, uh, that uh, challenge that you will enter in my room okay we have room in our uh, faculty room if you go to visit our faculty room there are some rooms individual so i have given onushka the challenge that if you able to score above 90 in the next semester then only you can enter inside my room otherwise you will not be allowed to enter inside my room and uh, you guys will be surprised to hear that uh, onushka has uh, kept her words in the very next semester she scored above 90 and she entered my room uh, that's the what i say that that was a so sweet moment in my life teaching career that what challenge i have given to her she successfully uh, uh, accepted that challenge and uh, got that uh, score that is that should be the passion for a student okay thank you onushka that was a big challenge i have given to you i hope 
you have not uh, mind uh, that day and today also uh, thanks a lot wish you a very uh, warm welcome and good luck for your bright future from my side thank you once again thank you very much thank you very much tk so i mean yeah it was it was a challenge and yes so just that like i'll con- i already concluded but i would just add like in college as uh, and the pankaj sir mentioned um plan it ahead and don't be afraid of competition or competition are not bad compete with yourself the more you compete try to be better and that's it at least that's what i learned from my college one of the things i learned thank you thank you everybody and yeah let's stay safe and hope that this time gets over soon thank you and same to you Uh, can anyone uh, inform me that our next speaker has joined already? Yeah, Omid has joined. Omid okay. has joined. Okay. Uh, Hello. I uh, uh, welcome uh, Mr. Omid Kumar, uh, our uh, second uh, presenter. Uh, Amit Kumar is a, a senior scientist in a semiconductor device uh, design group of uh, CSIR Central Electronics Engineering Research Institute, Elani, Rajasthan. Uh, he is an uh, assistant professor uh, in Academy of Scientific and Innovative Research, an institution of national importance. He has uh, passed his BTEC degree uh, from PM in the year of 2011. uh in my uh, according to my experience i have joined this institute uh, in 2010 uh, that time they were uh, final year students so i have hardly met them and uh, also amit kumar uh, but uh, frequently i have heard and even in now it is also uh, when any brilliant student uh, we meet Uh, or we meet any brilliant student in any semester then our senior faculty members are uh, telling that yes uh, he is brilliant intelligent but not like amit kumar so his badge is named like uh, actually uh, i request uh, professor tobin kumar dash please mute your audio okay uh, thank you sir uh, so uh, actually 2011 batch is uh, named by him that is amit kumar's batch so uh, welcome you amit kumar uh, very uh, thankful to you that uh, you have given us your uh, time from your busy schedule uh, so over to you please carry on uh, you are not audible Hello. Uh, you just uh, turn on your audio, please. Amit, please turn on your audio. Uh, no, you are not audible. Can anyone hear him? No. And uh, you just uh, turn on your audio. It's showing. It is muted. You just start on your microphone symbol is there in your screen. It's showing it's muted. Uh, so some uh, technical issues are there. Uh, can you uh, use another device? Can you join in from another device? Uh, we can wait for you. No problem. so student please wait for our uh, second speaker uh, she might uh, he might be have some uh, technical issues
I request uh, Professor Tarun Kumar Dash when uh, Amit Kumar will join. Uh, please. Yeah, ma'am. I am. I am trying, but uh, he is replying that some technical issues are there yes. with him. Yes. I am trying. I am. I am continuously okay. uh, chatting okay, with okay. him. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Mm. Ma'am, yeah, the same, yes. <laughs> the same issue is showing that uh, he's uh, to join. Is, uh, ask, ask him to join from any other mobile phone. No, that's fine, but uh, due to the uh, limitation of 100 participants, probably, oh, uh, he oh, oh. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 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 okay. Uh, so again, I have a request uh, to you. Uh, please, uh, one or two, can you please leave the meeting uh, so that our uh, second uh, presenter uh, can join? Uh, please, uh, few of you, please leave the meeting. Uh, actually, our limitation is 100. Uh, so I request you, please leave the meeting. We are very sorry for this inconvenience. Uh, please, uh, see are uh, requested not to uh, ask for them for joining. Uh, just wait. Uh, okay, now it's showing 98 gates. Uh, so, Professor Dash, uh, I request you to ask uh, our second presenter to join. Uh, showing 97. Hopefully, if uh, he try, then uh, he can join. Ajikati sir, are you there? Yeah, ma'am. I'm continuously trying with him. <laughs> there is some technical issue. Continuous, and I have all. I have already requested our speaker. I have already requested our third speaker to join. Uh, okay, so uh, okay, okay. I'm, uh, so I am trying, ma'am. Okay, mm. okay. Here's a requested uh, to ask your friends not to join now. Uh, please follow our YouTube streaming and uh, Facebook live uh, because uh, we have limitations of hundred participants only. Uh, so. Uh, we are very sorry for this inconvenience. Uh, please, you are requested your uh, 
Okay, thank you, Joydeep. And uh, first year, here also, you were requested to ask your uh, friends not to join now. Just follow our live streaming. Is uh, ninety nine reached? Seers are requested to just uh, send a message in your group uh, not to join because we have hundred uh, participants limitation. Uh, few of you were requested to leave the meeting. Uh, just follow our YouTube streaming. Actually, our second speaker uh, is awaiting. Okay, uh, thank you. Please, few of you were requested to leave the meeting, please. And now it's showing 96 participants. Uh, Professor uh, Tikidi, sir. Yeah, ma'am. I am in contact with him, but right now uh, it is showing that he is not online, but I am trying on mobile phone to call him. Okay, okay. Okay. Thank you. Also, I have requested the third speaker to join, such that we can continue the session with the third speaker. If you okay. will join. Chiketi sir, uh, our third speaker has joined. Ma'am, I am continuously trying. Uh, phone is ringing. Okay. Uh, actually, second speaker is uh, telling that he is not getting through. Uh, uh, can you can it be possible for him to use uh, other uh, mobile mic? 
Radha ma'am, I am trying my best to contact both of okay. the speakers. Okay, okay, okay. Hello, am I audible? Hello? 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 Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I heard some sound from our case packet. Yes, from case faculty. Right. Hello, Amit, are you there? Hello, Amit, can you hear me? Thank ma'am. Please call the audience. Hello, yes, hello. Uh, Amit? Yes, hello, hello. Amit, are you there? Amit, you are audible, Amit? Amit, you are audible. You can turn on your video. Hello. Yes, yes, you are. Okay, if you have problem to turn on your video, then uh, no need to turn on video. You just carry on with your audio only. I think uh, he has uh, some. I am sitting at home and the bandwidth is very small. Okay, okay, no need to turn on your video. You just carry on. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Sorry for this much. No, no, no. Everyone. It's okay. It's okay. All we are facing the technical issues. Okay, no problem. Okay. So, thank you, ma'am, for this wonderful introduction. But I don't think I deserve so much of a praise. I don't know what I have done. So, hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, audible. Yes, okay, I'm audible. Okay. So, First of all, I thank the Future Institute of Engineering and Management for providing me a platform to do or what, what, can, what, I can, what I can say. I have started my journey of academics from that institute only, and I have met some wonderful people over there. Some of them are still my very favorite, like Tarun sir, Shreya ma'am, and they all have guided me through all my career. Even now, I look for them for any suggestions, whatever, whenever I need, and I feel that all my efforts and all my success is only because of them so i'm very thankful to tarun sir and shirama for their wonderful cooperation and their support and guiding me into what i'm doing now and it's all because only of them so regarding myself i have started my uh, graduation that is i first i started my bsc i started to do my bsc from delhi university in 2006 and for one year i did my graduation over there but after doing one year of graduation, I found that uh, the things were not up to the mark and the quality of education I was getting in the university, the university was not up to that level which could satisfy my uh, 
thirst for electronics. So then I applied for different uh, engineering exams, and then uh, on those times we used to give AI Triple E was the exam for, to entering into different states, and then WBJ was there. And then when the counseling started, I choose Future Institute of Engineering and Management. Some of my friends suggested that you you should join this college because it is showing a good progress in the recent three or four years, and the campus placement is very good. And being a middle class family from a rural background of Bihar, our the aim of us was to go to some good college and get some placement. That was the ultimate aim at at those times when I entered the college. So when I reached the college, I saw it's a small one. It has two or three buildings. and then no hostel was there so i was a bit disappointed with what the quality of atmosphere like the college is built up by the atmosphere and the crowd what is there it's not only the students and faculties and everything the whole campus gives the complete environment where the people can cooperate talk they can exchange ideas and then you build up a relationship for a long time So in the starting, what I thought is I have left such a beautiful campus of the university and came to such a small college. But then, when I started uh, taking the classes and the commitment of my faculties, I must say the the commitment from the faculties was much, much, much more than what we used to offer for ourselves. Like all we we had college friends in different colleges, and people talk that we have classes from ten to four and ten to five only. And in in those times we have we do have classes from nine to six I think, so for the whole day we used to attend classes and uh, there was a thing that the bunking classes was never a thing in our college life, so we used to uh, go to faculty and ask them whether we can we could bunk a class or not and they laugh and say bunk के लिए कौन पूछता है भाई bunk के लिए तो भागना पड़ता है so that was that atmosphere and I must say that the thing which I got over there so when I attended the college and I took the classes i never required to do self study at home or do late night study because the quality of teaching they offered me was self sufficient to do whatever we can do in our exams so that was a thing and i am very thankful to the faculties over there some of uh, uh, one one thing i must say that few of them are excellent few of them are good but every one of them was hard working and that's my last uh, thing to say about my faculties so in the uh, first year when i gave exam and i scored good marks people were appreh- had a apprehension apprehension that whether he is a true student or he had done some manipulations or that sort of but then i met tarun sir and i don't know what is going me we used to take the electrical engineering lab he used to take and one day suddenly told me that you need to do phd and that was out of my brain that why i should do phd am i that tarun sir Yes, sir. Sir, please say me. What What do you want to say, sir? Thank you, Amit. Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay, you have kept my words because uh, when I meet you, I have seen something uh, different uh, which I have not seen on in others, and uh, so I uh, have requested you that you should join PhD or higher study R and D, uh, and yes, I was right in that day. i am feeling so proud that now you are going to get your doctorate degree and you are involving in such a big a, a research and development uh, organization of india csir so prestigious organization so thanks a lot for keeping my words especially amit thanks a lot so i remember that lab we we had to design an rlc resonance circuit or what and i didn't know what was the basic behind it So everyone was doing the experiment and taking the result and asked you why it is like this. Why? How can we solve to get a curve like this? Then you explained and that was the thing. That point of my this uh, academic life. So still we had apprehension that what will do, what how I will do my PhD. Is it really required or only sir wanted? So I need to do it. Yes, sir, sir. You want to say something? No, no. You continue, please. Okay, you continue. Okay, because I, because I saw your ra- hand raised up. So uh, then I started to took my classes seriously. Seriously, some of the subjects I didn't like very much. But then one thing I just wanted to say that in your B Tech course, which subject you will dislike more will come into your life again and again and again. So in those times, I used to do 
I used to hate microwave engineering and electromagnetic theory. And unfortunately, or fortunately, I'm working on that field only in my present time. So even though I took uh, got uh, two jobs in my BTEC, we we got we got good placement in our fourth year, and almost every one of our batch got placed. But then I got this opportunity to do a uh, MTech from CSIR Pilani. So at at those times. Uh, An MTech degree, and then you have to apply for uh, it was Purple and CRD was is not a preferred choice for a middle class family. That 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 much I knew at that time. So going to a foreign country is itself a big challenge, and I was not very comfortable at those times. And most of us. Uh, agree to the fact that all of them cannot aspire to go to a foreign look. So whatever we could get is the best institute is like IIT and uh, most some of few of those NITs and obviously Jadavpur and Shipur got a very good name in Kolkata. So then we tried some uh, one or two friends of my batch too. We started uh, ourselves. So Tarun sir gave me a day that you should work on a weekly plan like for the Next week, you write another subject and don't uh, intermix those subjects. That for the one full week, you pay your full attention to a particular subject, make notes, listen to lectures, and compile everything. So it uh, made a good uh, impact on my academic. In, uh, in the last year, we cracked the uh, uh, gate exam and got an. It has its own academy that is ACSIR, which I am working as assistant professor myself. So it is an equivalent to IIT. So all the IITs are established by an act of parliament. So parliament has the power to create new universities, and it has been given a complete There might be some uh, technical issue. Um, uh, there is some signal problem. We uh, cannot hear you. Yes, uh, problem. Permitting. Please have patience with us. So one thing uh, I must say uh, that uh, though he is from Bihar, but uh, he has chosen our institute uh, and he has uh, uh, experience, uh, he has a very good experience about our institute and our lab also. Uh, so we are very proud to hear from his experience that uh, we are uh, one of the best institutes uh, in our students also. Okay, he has joined again. Amit, can you hear me? Uh, again, a hundred participants reached. Uh, so uh, please, I again request a few of you, please leave the meeting. I think his faculty uh, could not join. He could not join for that. Uh, please uh, leave uh, two or three few more. Uh, please leave the meeting uh, because our guest faculty is trying to join, but uh, he couldn't. Hello. Hello. So I'm back, ma'am. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. No, thank you. Uh, 
मैंने कहाँ पे छोड़ा था मैं प्लीज यू आर टेलिंग अबाउट योर इंस्टीट्यूट इट इट्स लाइक आईआईटी लाइक दैट ओके गॉट इट मैम सो दिस आई वाज द फर्स्ट बैच ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स दैट गॉट एडमिटेड टू द यूनिवर्सिटी एंड देन वी हैड टू स्पेंड वन टू कंप्लीट इयर्स एट दिस सिरी पिलानी कैंपस in which we were made to understand what are the basics of semiconductors and the manufacturing processes and everything so uh, in our colleges most of the, what we learned in our subjects and what we do in our real life people say that it's entirely different so when you join a software company and anything like that and then you regret that what i have studied in my btech is of no use it the issue is you have a boarded a train that is going to a different station after doing your electronics and communication engineering the area of work in semiconductor uh, this uh, it industry is not justified but because the opportunities are very less in core sectors and such kind of things so what software industry is looking for talented people and i believe that most of the talented people join the first uh, scheme to get filled is electronics and communication engineering so the best people joined this batch and then they got placed into softwares and then they spent their life writing codes or testing codes and the very so the people joining the r&d division or people going for mtech and these things are mostly who could not score, score that much of marks in their graduation and then they had to clear that thing in their background that they can get a good job in future so then they joined some iit so my request to all the members who are here if you are good in studies first aim for doing something good and don't go for just go to some software job and the way to do is you start preparing for gate or mtech and then you you have also options of doing the integrated mtech psc in india itself so that also provide a good opportunity in the future regarding myself when i joined this mtech course and completed it subsequently i started working as a trainee scientist in seri pilani itself so it was a temporary kind of thing and i worked on some projects i studied something and after one and half year i gave another exam that was for iit bombay and munash university it was a joint batch psc degree so iit bombay and munash university of australia had a tie up university kind of thing in which you spend three years in iit bombay and one year in uh, munash university that is fully free so that our hod already mentioned that studying in foreign universities comes with a zero tuition fee that was a typical example of thing that you spend three semesters in india and one year in three years in india and one year in australia for free but then i got uh, this opportunity to apply for the post of scientist again so an opportunity came up in which a uh, vacancy was floated for the recruitment of scientist in electronics stream and i applied for that and i got selected and so i had to leave that csd program midway and i have joined this very pilani as a scientist in 2016 and since 2016 i have been working at very uh, pilani for the first 4 years i worked as a scientist and this last year i got promoted to senior scientist the work because many of you are not aware of csir i wanted to tell you that csir is an institute which is under the aegis of ministry of science and technology so as the government has different agencies with it like this department of space department of atomic energy it also has the department of science and technology and it has different streams associated with it and one of the streams is council of scientific industrial research whose main aim is to promote research and development in the field of science industry and research so your research should be associated or it should be intended to use for some industrial benefit benefit for the benefit of industry regarding this council of scientific and industrial research that is csir it has total of 36 national labs and these 37 labs are classified into five sub categories one is the biological sciences physical sciences other is chemical sciences engineering sciences and information sciences so in these five classifications all the labs can be categorized like uh, one two labs i can uh, mention you when you got up at jadhavpur station and uh, moved towards this jadhavpur thana police station or the jadhavpur area you 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 see two institutes over there uh, cgcri center glass and ceramic research institute the right side of the road and in the left side you have some institute of chemical microbiology 
chemical biology, PCMB, I think. Yeah, ICMB. Can can anyone correct me? If I'm I'm correct about the names. Actually, one is IICB, and IICB. the second one is IICS, and the third one is uh, CGCSIR. CGCRI. Sorry. Uh, sorry, CGCRI. So these two labs of CSIR work in the field. One is working in the field of chemical biology, and second one is working in the field of glass and ceramics. So, uh, so every lab is dedicated to a theme, and one and every lab is dedicated to develop some of the technologies that can be used for a particular purpose. Like glass and ceramics research institute is focused on developing different type of ceramics, glass for atomic reactors, submarines. So. The, it is radiation hardened, radiation resistant, and it has a particular purpose to solve. Similarly, the uh, CD Pilani, where I work, is directly related to the development of electronics. And that is what I admire. That is directly related to my work, which I have studied in my BTEC. So here, I, when I joined here, I was working on RF MEM switches. What, what is RF MEM switch? I must, um, in the short, I will tell you that for the satellite communication, they need to work at very high frequency communication. And in those in satellites where the signals are working at very high frequency, any misinterpretation of information can be deterred. So you are sending some signal from here to satellite for execution of some task. Uh, if that signal is corrupted, or if you want to send an on signal and the satellite receives an off signal, it will malfunction. And, and this is a cause of major, major disorientation of satellites. In typical semiconductor, like when you talk of silicon, you must have heard about silicon, like you, you know about transistors and MOSFETs. It's made up of a material called silicon in which the electrons travel through the silicon. But ultimately, it's a solid piece of material. It's a single continuous material. And the electrons travel from one end to other end by the application of voltage. By any means, if voltage is not perfectly ma uh, maintained, even in the off condition, where you don't want any signal to travel, the signal will eventually cross due to some thermal excitation, or if there is radiation in uh, space, it can work by itself, and you have not given any signal. So to remove this thing, there's a concept of mechanical switch in which a very small gap is maintained, that is the air gap. So even it's not a continuous thing, and when you apply a particular voltage, they make a contact, the signal is passed, and when you dissociate the voltage, breaks off. So I worked on this field that was a project for ISRO. And how this institute, like the research lab works, that they work on different kind of projects that is funded by different agencies. Like ISRO wants to achieve something, it wants to get some work done, and then it, it floats an idea that if anyone is willing to do this thing for me, I will pay this much of money. That is confidential, but it's under the table, the talks are good, the talks goes up. And then if you are expert in that field, you quote for that in the, OK, I will develop such kind of thing. You do them some survey of the data, how things are being made and how you can make it. Then you do some simulation software, and then you replicate or those ideas you do in simulation, and you make something out of it. So this is a typical workflow, like how things are done in a research lab. And my research lab is dedicated to four different areas. like. One theme, as mentioned, is space electronics, in which I make we make components for space. Other is defense electronics, like we we make different components for, for army, air force, and navy. So what, they want pressure sensors, they want temperature sensors, they want they want humidity sensors, they want barometers, they want bolometers, they, they, whatever they can think of getting in India, we can make it. And we 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 used to provide these things to them after doing a complete literature survey and making all those things in our own lab because these are of national importance and things are not easily available in open market there are certain types of embargo over there so that different countries don't want to provide such technologies to india because you know india is a developing country it is making some progress rapid progress in defense and space so the foreign suppliers are always reluctant to provide any technology to india
probably again some uh, technical issues. Uh, Can you hear me? Uh, he has left the meeting. I think mean, some technical issues probably. Okay, uh, let's wait for a few minutes. Again, I request uh, Professor uh, TKD sir uh, to please contact with our guest faculty, Amit Kumar. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, he has joined. Uh, Amit, can you hear me? Getting disconnected again and again. Uh, okay. okay, okay. No problem. Uh, carry on. No problem. So, so, what I will leave by saying that. Uh, for any person wanting to pursue a PhD or like beyond engineering, what you have done in BTEC, you should aim for doing research in the field of your own domain if you wish to. So, if you wish to do research in my school, there are certain areas where you can apply for. Like, there are certain things you can get uh, industrial project training. Like, when you do, you you need to do one month training over for your uh, coursework, like in third year, you need to do one month training. You can do it at my institute at Sri Plani. We have arrangements for this. So your institute can your institute can make a formal MOU with my institute, and then your students can come at my institute for one month stay and do the project, live projects in my institute. Other way to get into my institute is by the way of being a project assistant. So when you get a project, there occurs a vacancy in which we can hire you, so you do some work for me. And obviously, our JRF Junior Research Fellow and Senior Research Fellow are two other way of entering into a research lab. Like you give an exam, it is conducted by CSIR, and when you get selected through it, you can join my institute for three years and four years. You get a regular stipend of 35,000. And then in those four years, you can pursue your PhD by selecting a proper guide and proper topic of your choice, and then you do it. Obviously, there are MTech and PhD programs like I did in ACSIR. You, ap you apply for MTech or you apply for PhD. You, you choose your lab of your preference, like one center is in Seri Pilani, other center is in CSIO Chandigarh. So these two institutes work in the area of electronics. Two other areas in which, through which you can come is, first is quick hire scientists. So if we find that any person has a potential to do excellence in research, it has some background work done, and if you find your biodata very impressive enough, we can hire you right away. And we'll pay you salary equivalent to a scientist, but it's a temporary post, and, and after three years, if your work is found suitable, you can be selected through open recruitment. And obviously the last one is obviously a proper scientist recruitment, as I joined. So institute floats an advertisement for a post of scientist, you apply for it, you give an exam or you get an interview, and when you get selected, you can join with a scientist, scientist position and then you excel into your career. So this is regarding in India, as my last speaker already spoken has spoken about how you can pursue research in foreign. So my focus is how you should pursue research in India if you are, if you are not willing to go outside. So there are enough research opportunities available Various labs are working in the field. Various IITs are also working excellently with excellent opportunities. So you should also aim for those institutes. And once you do PhD, there is always a scope of going outside. There are certain boundaries are in foreign countries like in Europe, Belgium, or Taiwan. There are enough number of boundaries in which you are in the areas. You do your post uh, 
PhD over there, postdoctoral fellowship you can get over there. And then when you come back to India, if you wish to, you will have an excellent opportunity to work in India. So yes, the journey is a bit, a little tough, but then when I see myself after five years of joining CSIR or working in the field of research, I find myself very much relaxed and I can pursue those areas which is not possible by working in any corporate field. So if I found any uh, problem associated with any person, I, I have the independence of working on it. So the money is there, the resources are there, so I just need to prove with myself that, okay, if this can be done, the opportunity is always there. The government is willing to support, the people are willing to support. You just have to prove it by your doing it yourself. And with these things, I can say that there is an opportunity waiting for everyone. So don't limit yourselves. Uh, uh, it's a sad thing to say. I don't want to say it, but I found it very, uh, what say, people are not willing, the people, local people of Kolkata are not willing to leave Kolkata. So all they wish to do that if I get a job in my hometown, I will get settled here. Many of my friends and my BTEC, my classmates joined there and they stayed there. Had they joined any such institute outside, they would have excelled in the field. So with these things, I, I thank all of you. And if any question is there, please ask me. Uh, thank you, Amit. Uh, I uh, request uh, all the participants, if you have any query regarding your government job, uh, any PSU job, or any R&D-based job uh, in all over India, you feel free to ask our guest faculty, uh, Amit Kumar. Uh, hi, ma'am. So, uh, I'll just ask, uh, is GATE the only way to get into PSUs? Okay, so earlier the different PSU used to conduct their own exam, right? But then the getting those exams, actually the government wanted to make a combined exam through which the people don't suffer by giving multiple exams, right? So, PSU generally now takes through GATE exam only. So that is the limitation of PSU. Okay, and anyone else? Okay, since you are uh, associated with uh, CISR, uh, could you uh, do do you know how to get into an uh, uh, MTech program or an integrated PhD program in TIFR? Yes, sir. So TIFR floats its own advertisement. So I believe the advertisement is out. It, it calls for application for MTech and PhD. So you just need to apply through a regular portal. It's very easy for TIFR. It's an open portal. You can apply over there. Okay, I have one question to Amit. Uh, how uh, uh, you prepared yourselves? for this uh, very tough competitive exam uh, in our country. So if you uh, share your uh, few words about the preparation, so that will be helpful uh, for your juniors. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Okay. The thing is, uh, you don't need, uh, some people used to take tuitions. Please don't do it. The college is sufficient enough to provide you basic understanding of your subject. If you wish to do or achieve anything else, you can just go to the portal is there. That is, all the online videos are available over NET. So NPTEL, National Program of Technical Enhanced Learning, that is the Government of India initiative in which every lecture of IIT, even colleges, regional colleges are uploaded on NPTEL. So you don't need to go to any preparation institute for your preparation for competitive exams. If you wish to, you just go into NPTEL, it's completely free. Just make a schedule of yourself, like I just explained, just uh, told in my last few minutes that so devote your one week for one subject. Like if you study control system, give one week of comp control, complete time to your control system. Make notes of that every lecture. So every NPTEL like control system will have 30 odd lectures. So you will need to give 30 days for your control system only. So just segregate it into five weeks. So five into seven, 35 days uh, is there. So five weeks is enough for your control system. Similarly, and one more thing is to focus that every subject is not equally important to your PSU exam. 
certain papers you can just leave out like if you if you are trying very hard for electromagnetic theory and then you are not able to crack it then stop wasting so much of time now in emt so that is my solution so if you are weak just uh, go through it make your efforts to solve those things but do if if you are feeling that it's your my mathematics was earlier not to leave your mathematics in third semester but then you have to give uh, importance to those in your eighth semester for the psu so things are now different so what the government also wants that you don't leave out your subject which which they have studied in beginning so this math part and control so if uh, you wish me to name the subjects in which you should uh, study more give more focus to semiconductor devices like transistors mosfets bjts and then the diode is there so if these four topics you start with diode basic that if if your diode concept is clear then i believe your semiconductor complete concept will be done so you should focus on diodes then transistors mosfets and then it's already done so whatever fermi level and optical devices that is all based on the principles of diode if you move beyond that then the control system is there which carries which carries uh, which is more weight is than other subjects then dsp analog electronics and dsp is also there so these two subjects will have impact electric magnetic theory is a powerful subject if you if you can do these five to six subjects then your psu exam will be very easy to be very easy to clear other subjects you can give less importance but then don't miss out just take a look of uh, the last 5 to 10 years examinations what questions are being asked how the patterns are and if you wish to get the feel of the examination uh, join a test series that is in in class not the online test series go for offline test series so that you will get a feel of how the exams are being conducted so that will be more beneficial than uh, taking proper classes and then giving exam my suggestion is do this in ptl wala thing and then go for test series that will complete your all the task in your five to six semesters only so this, if you are in second year start preparing after fourth semester so two years are more than enough for your getting back or psc okay uh, did you do did you do any internships in your third and fourth years yes uh, i did an internship in third year but then it was only with bsnl so i didn't uh, give importance to internship but now i believe that uh, we should give more importance to internship because now the people are coming from different institutes to our institute for training and then we see that if you don't give importance to your internship you don't get a feel of what is being done in the real field the idea of internship is to get a real feel of what is available in the industry like if you join a telecom sector you know how the bts works how the communication channel works what are the losses how the modeling is being done what should be the height of antenna how what is the orientation of antenna what is the power level what is the sar level so the idea of internship was to get a feel real feel of what is provided but then the infrastructure in india is not very sufficient to provide the knowledge of all these things it is a customary kind of so i request this uh, our institute the future institute to create a roadmap to send your students to a good uh, internship program so rather than giving the choice to students that you should go to you should yourself arrange some internship you should also take an initiative like you can easily talk with different industries sufficient enough to provide such opportunity so because in third year or two and half years of study students are not smart enough or understanding enough to select a proper institute for their internship it is just a kind of time pass thing but then i believe that it should be done with more focus uh 
thank you, Amit. Uh, definitely, we should keep this in mind. Your suggestion uh, that uh, regarding your industrial training, uh, definitely our HOD sir is present here, uh, and our all faculty members are also here. They must be uh, keep that in mind so that our students uh, get benefit from their industrial training. Uh, but one thing I have. Uh, I need to ask you that you are uh, talking about uh, semiconductor device like diode, transistor, MOSFET, uh, etc. So, uh, according to my experience, uh, our students are not uh, so much interested uh, in this uh, topic. Uh, they are interested in uh, signal processing, communication, like that. So, uh, can you uh, suggest them or uh, what is the opportunity in the semiconductor industry, especially uh, will they join after uh, getting uh, their PhD degree uh, in uh, Southeast, uh, Southeastern Asia? like uh, Samsung uh, in South, South Korea, in uh, Taiwan. So is there any opportunity to join after uh, doing PhD in semiconductor device? Hello. Uh, Omita, uh, did you get my uh, point? Probably, ma'am, he is disconnected right oh, now. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, uh, so let's uh, move on for our uh, next speaker. Uh, Sham has joined. Uh, yeah, yeah, ma'am. Sam is present right now. Okay. Uh, so, uh, warm welcome to our uh, third uh, speaker, uh, Sham Shundar Chatterjee. Uh, he is currently working with uh, Deloitte USI as an architect uh, close to two years. And he has six years of experience in uh, SAP utility uh, in electricity, gas, and water industry. He had completed his BTEC degree in uh, ECE uh, in the year 2014. Uh, so... Uh, Again, I uh, want to add a few um, lines about Shem. Uh, one of the best, uh, not only best, he is uh, uh, very, very much uh, efficient uh, in painting. Uh, if you uh, uh, enter in your HOD's room, in our department, then uh, one of his painting, uh, that is uh, Dr. Sharvapulli uh, Radhakrishnan's portrait, is uh, hanging there for a decoration of the room. And every year, in the occasion of the Teacher's Day, uh, we tribute our, uh, we give our uh, tribute to that portrait. So uh, Sam is uh, reminiscent in every year uh, in the Teacher's Day. So not only he is an architect, uh, he is a good painter also. So thank you, Sham, and welcome you. And uh, over to you. Hi, everyone. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, you are audible. Okay, uh, sorry, I uh, want to open my video mode on, but there are some technical challenges currently I'm facing. So, can I uh, going with the just audio or? Yes, yes, you continue. Without. Okay. If, if is it possible, then I can try to move into video. Okay. 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 So, uh, hello everyone, and very good morning to all of you. Uh, it's already 4:13 p.m. Okay. So it's so strange uh, that I said good morning. Uh, but yes, I have the justification for that. Uh, I didn't say uh, good evening or good afternoon. I'm going with the good morning. Uh, why my justification is that for that uh, morning shows the day and it's being business. So I want to bring some refreshment with the word good morning. And if I'm not wrong, you people have spent close to two hours already on this call and this call started just after lunch. And I hope uh, you all understand what I mean. Uh, okay, uh, I'm honored to be a part of this webinar and I wanted to say a big, big thank you to all of my respective teacher uh, for giving me such an opportunity to interact with all. And thank you for such nice word, Gagi ma'am. And I have, I can see, uh, Tung sir here, Manu sir here, Devajiti sir here, 
i don't see uh, i hope uh, all of them the faculties like our uh, hod uh, devasister sb sir uh, i i can see them but i hope uh, they are also join this call okay uh, <clears throat> so once again i introduce myself uh, i am shamsudar chatterjee and i have completed btech in electronics and communication engineering in the year of 2014 from pm and uh, after that i joined boss i worked there for one year and then i joined accenture there i worked for close to four years and then i left from accenture and joined deloitte us or you can say usi uh, and i have been working with close to two years with deloitte okay so before i joined college uh, i was pretty much sure that i don't want to go it sector rather than uh, i will work on with the food company or i can do kind of r&d that kind of things but not it sector <laughs> so that's why i choose this you know because i have lot of siblings and they are mostly in it sector so trust me uh, that time i was Uh, not aware anything about this ec department and what are the subjects i don't know about anything but gradually i come to know about this and i was doing pretty well i met lot of good teachers i already taken name like gagi ma'am monisha tigari sir sb sir uh, devish sir and everyone like i am doing well i am doing a, like new college uh, new plus roommates uh hostels new college mates and everything is going good but somehow i struggled i struggled with the computer related subject because i don't like those subject at the time like i joined 2010 and the, like in first semester second semester third semester i have been dealing with that those subject like c c++ data structure java and it was horrible for me at the time actually i don't want to do that but yes you have to pass your exam and i i i can remember like at that time before exam i knocked the senior doors to please uh, let me know how can i pass the exam okay <laughs> so okay gradually uh, i was in third year and i got to know about the reality that time he uh, most of the id company will visit your college and they mostly ask coding related questions and i was not good at all also before you have been interviewed you have to pass the aptitude test and you have to perform well in gd and extempo i was so much puzzled so much puzzled okay and uh, i can remember uh, uh, most of the time uh, i sit with ekadi sir and just doing such some discussion sir how can i manage those things i am not good at all those things i don't know about anything coding and they are asking about this coding so i'm puzzled okay uh then what i did uh, i started to take preparation for gate exam okay and my plan was to crack the gate exam and after that doing mtech and phd and that time i was in third year if i will not get crack the gate exam then i will join in uh, electronic based company that's my plan that was my plan at the time in the meantime uh, i applied for gate but result was not so good although uh, yeah, i good i i can appear for good college actually i took preparation from coding related subject then c c++ c sharp data structure java oracle everything i like started everything and just uh, got to know ki how is it work uh, how is it do that the thing before i have completed my college i have few companies offer in my hand but still i was thinking about the gate exam but we are mostly belong from middle class family that's a big problem for us when i told my parents everything about this my plan ki i don't want to join this such it companies and i want to pursue like i want once again appear in gate so still for this next one year i want to do this preparation and all and they are don't allow they don't entertain me with that thoughts okay they strictly told me you you have a uh, i you have you have a job in your hand to join any company i was so much confused at that time then i took a decision 
to join electronic based company instead of id company <clears throat> and which was very obvious to me that time ki i joined bose i moved to bangalore from kolkata and i can say that was the uh, right time right decision i took i told you everyone like i have seen that like those people are kolkata based or they don't want to leave the city that's the biggest problem for them i have lot of people lot of friend uh, who are good at it at the time of education in college they are good at coding they are good at in their subject they don't want to go outside okay so they are struggling now they are struggling now really they are struggling now because in kolkata we have the companies we have not good project that's the biggest problem in kolkata okay but i took the right decision that time i moved to bangalore and uh, what can i say <clears throat> yes i joined uh, both that time but somehow i struggled in uh, same company okay uh, why because uh, it was in my mind that i have to work with diode i have to work with the transistor i have to work with the resistor capacitor i want to with the vlsi and just one year just not this year i have a project in vlsi under moisture if i can, if i'm not wrong and i did very well moisture can tell us he, <laughs> what was that and yes I, <laughs> so i was pretty much sounded ki uh, uh, we know about the boss okay and uh, i like made lot of people over there they are doing well but somehow i struggled why because most of the time i have to join the team like fabrication or assemble like there's a reality you know in india the what are the companies are there related to uh, electronic space i don't know much about electric space but electronic space they are doing fabrication and assemble they are, don't do create anything they are like uh, uh, manage their uh, like components from taiwan from japan from Ch- china okay and they are just assemble them they are fabricating them so uh, i was thinking ki no 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 i made my mind uh, to get out from that and start fresh then i called one of my teacher and he suggested me to join it as soon as possible uh, sorry i am i audible am i audible hello yes yes, yes audible. audible sorry sorry ma'am uh so uh, yes i have my mind mind ki i have to leap out from that and i start with this uh then i called one of my teacher uh, at the time and he suggested me ki okay do one thing join it and there is a possibility and yes uh, before that i told him he i don't want to get into this it like there the formal things okay i have to do coding and those thing i don't want to do that is there anything else and he is a ibm manager okay and he told me a uh, lot of things about that in it related things and he told me you can join it there is a kind of opportunity the industry called utility industry utility industry in this uh, mean you have to deal with the millions of customer who are related to energy energy in the sense electricity it could be a gas gas it could be oil and there is the another industry called water so you have to dealing with that before you have to dealing with that you have to learn about sap uh, sap stand for system application production okay if you people uh, want to learn about sap you can google it or you can uh, go to youtube you can search about sap and you can learn about it yes uh, it's not possible to learn sap from outside because it's not economical actually to learn sap you have to pay like around 1.5 to 2 lakhs nowadays so it's not an economical so either you have to join any organization then you go, go through this any training then you can learn or either high level you can learn through youtube or lot of things but it's not possible to learn outside us okay and if you have a money then you can obviously you can learn so that time uh, i have appeared for mtech and elite mass exam okay uh, and i scored well right exam called mcat and elite mass okay if you will aware about it then okay if you are not aware about it please uh, note down there's a two exam in india called elite mass and mcat so it is related about your aptitude test 
and to crack this exam you have to go through like not uh uh, uh what can i say the purun sharma purun sharma bharwell not bubble you have to go through that then you can crack and you can score good in that exam other well i don't know uh there is other boy i just forget the name uh there is other book also there okay but i did from arun sharma okay so in a few days i was a getting interview call from accenture as well as ibm the i had to come kolkata and for accenture i had to go chennai and i chose accenture i got chennai express mail and i reached vel university for the interview and it was an interesting journey no uh, first of all i have no any idea how to reach there i have no android phone uh, at the time and chennai people don't will entertain you with speaking in hindi and they are not good at all in english so they are kind of mess up but somehow i managed and i reached bellur university finally i cracked the interview also there are some interesting things i want to share here uh, your interview na your interview depend upon you actually that means how do you give your answer for the every question that means you should aware of it this your like you uh, what can i say that this your interview is like a, your car okay will you drive it or someone else that kind of concept you have to prepare about yourself topic very well uh, when you appear in any interview interview about your about yourself so about yourself is a very important why i'm telling you uh, when you starting like they are asking about the yourself and you said about yourself blah 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 my name is that i am doing that but try to manage like that a way it is not taking long time it's a sweet and simple and you put some good words good sentence this sentence or word can generate some question for interviewer okay so that means you drive your interviewer not interviewer drive you okay because as an interviewer hardly he or she has 20 to 30 minutes to interview you and if you consume the time doing like that so probably you will get a chance to crack the interview if you are not doing that that interview have enough time to ask lot of question to you and it's also possible you are not able to give all question all all the answer okay so that's the problem so think about it so yes somehow i managed and i cracked the uh, accenture interview and i have to wait for that uh, to get the inter- uh, offer letter offer letter and yes uh, i got it and one more thing uh, articulation is very important uh, when you interact with the interviewer so try to put some light uh, to your articulation part okay and so yes then uh, when i got the offer letter from accenture then i moved to chennai so from bangalore bangalore to chennai one night journey i moved Chen- uh, i moved chennai and then i started i started in the sense uh, my training basic training is started okay after when is basic tra- training is over then there is something the tricky thing is happened with me that i am a lucky because i have in my mind ki i want to go with this utility industry i don't want to fix with some other work it related work okay so i had a good deal with kind of uh, training manager okay i told him Uh, what are my wishes? What are my dreams? And I am from VC background, and I did that. I did those. Those are the things. So I request him to please give me a chance. Uh, he, I want to go through SAP training. So there is a, some possibilities. I will get a chance to join utility industry. And yes, hopefully I will get SAP training, and I did well. uh one fine morning i received a call from american water project in mumbai and i had to move mumbai for american water and I'm, what is american water is the uh, american government uh company who deals with the wastage water okay so how to you reuse the wastage water so that time i am a very new guy at that time so i learned try to learn uh, what they did how to do 
lot of thing uh, there is a one year i work for american water then american uh, then i jumped into the electric and gas industry and that was the time uh, i was struggling a lot yes it's not a smooth journey but yes i learned through that and uh, no my dreams comes true kind of thing yeah, i just joined electronics sorry ele- electric and gas industry that time then i moved to pune within accenture within a same company same organization but service are different when i was in mumbai i worked with the american water project and then i got to know how to dealing with the water what are the design what are the pipelines are there how to you supply the water door to door now is a similar concept but there is a uh, some technical differences obviously there the electricity and gas now i working with the starting with the electricity lot of hard work i did i learned about this industry okay and when i was uh, initially i dealing with electricity uk government passed the bill to remove all the legacy meter from most of the city and come up with the smart meter so what is the difference between smart meter and your legacy meter in india mostly we have the legacy meter that means uh, there is a no such platform or no such automation industry should fetch automatically your consumption okay so people come to your house taking your consumption and there's a lot, lot of human errors okay so they try to achieve this they try to overcome those human errors as that's why they try to bring in some new thing that's called smart meter and they give us like two years to do research to do analysis then finalize your design after that there's a like lot of things like uh, field uh, field part and your like pudding related part lot of things are there but yes now uh, we worked hard and 2019 everything is live in production production in the sense in the market and uh, what we did basically in smart meter each and every 30 minutes we are automatically uh, connect with your meter and take your consumption so in a day there is a 48 times we get we are getting your consumption so there is a no uh, such errors we suppose you have a 100 consumption but due to human error or due to some kind of theft issue or anything company getting like there is a unit of 60 okay 60 kilowatt instead of 100 watt 100 kilowatt okay so that kind of things we mitigate and what we did we did whatever the your obviously you have a account in a bank account and we add your electric account to your bank account so you can't miss the payment date okay so that's the biggest thing we have done uh in this part when we move to legacy to smart meter okay and after this success the scotland there is a called city dublin they are want to do the similar way same sector okay so i have a lot of friends who move from pune to dublin and they are settled there okay from uh, actually this project within this uh, accenture happening currently so it will take around 5 years to complete that so it's now kind of ongoing project and like uh, there are lot of people they are doing ms okay from dublin university and they are also join this project and some people are went from accenture many people are went from like kind of uh, research lab or universities okay so yes uh, that time i left accenture and i moved to deloitte in 2019 i joined deloitte usi and deloitte as a university in hyderabad deloitte doing their research in hyderabad itself so now i moved to from electricity to gas now i'm dealing with the gas okay and nowadays there is a kind of very challenging role uh, challenging role i'm handling with my people we are like around 40 to people are there all over india and uh, before joined deloitte i would tell uh, i want to say one thing like when i left accenture i have seven offer in my hand okay so 
you 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 people know about the big four like deloitte one of them kpmg one of them pwc one of them and eny i cracked three uh, deloitte pwc and eny and rest are like four like those uh, service based companies there there is a different there is service based and product based so i mean now in product based company deloitte and deloitte also and now american water is a part of deloitte now and deloitte is handling this uh research and all everything currently and there is a lot of cash also okay now there is a challenging role is that due to this pandemic uh like lots of people are like unemployed okay and there is a lot of material issue there is a financial issue with all of them so government decided to do one thing he like in i don't know uh, in india we have not such like there's a gas pipeline over there in american so they can provide gas door to door so there is a meter okay for gas and they are provided gas like suppose lpg but american government like introduce rng rng in the sense renewable energy gas so it could be a your gobar gas it could be your like uh, natural gas it could be anything so they are tried to provided this gas to the same channel same pipeline now this is the challenging ki how can you uh, flow both the gases your uh, like lpg and your rng with the same channel okay they don't want to do another channel for lpg or they don't want to do with for rng for another channel and we have the same meter so now we have to do one thing like uh, we just try to differentiate uh, whatever the density because we have to provide this gas like uh, you have to liquid form correct so we can change the density and there is another problem hopefully you all people know about the uh, equation pv is equal to nrt okay so this is a pressure dependent upon the temperature so there is another problem in america if there is a like temperature low or some some more temperature high so suppose <clears throat> your meter shows you you can take 100 consumption but it's actually not is a 100 consumption it could be a 90 it could be 100 it's dependent upon your temperature so that's the biggest biggest thing now and there is another challenge uh for lpg uh, there is a no dependency with the distance wherever you are where, where like wherever the supplier are you can get the 100% pressure okay like kind of uniform pressure you can get but for the rng gas you will not get the uniform pressure suppose if there is a sub if, if you are like within a 5 km within the supplier you will can use 100% but if you are like around 10 km or 15 km then you will get suppose 15% or suppose you can use 40% now how can you bill them how can you charge them hello uh, yes. hello sham can yes. you hear me Yes, uh, yes, actually yes. Uh, we have some time limit uh, so would you please conclude within 5 uh, to 7 minutes okay ma'am okay ma'am okay ma'am okay ma'am sure okay. sure, sure. Okay. because uh, after that there are uh, question answer session so we have to give some time for that also uh, so please conclude within 7 to 5 5 uh, to 7 minutes okay 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 so folks uh, the thing is that uh, like Uh, whatever we have the deregulation market in india with the telecommunication like vodafone like uh, your airtel like uh, your uh, jio suppose government has a certain uh, wiring okay certain wiring in the says they have a grid they have a everything but you you can choose your own plan okay suppose you can you can go with the vodafone you can go with the jio or you can go with the uh, idea anyone so it depends upon up to you so same way in american market there is a called a deregulated market there is a no such uh, government regulation so you can go with the any kind of electricity product or any kind of gas product in us market as well as uk market or as well as australian market so what i want to say ki yes if you are in like electronics background there are a lot of opportunity either you can do ms master of science either you can join it company either you can go for mtech and research anything but if you joined it company within the it company you have a such a opportunity 
to join the R and D team, do such activity like you have gone through these electronics related things, radars, like your uh, signal system, digital. So also you can use your knowledge over there. What I am doing current days. Okay, so I am good at with that. What I am doing, I am happy with that. And similar way, I am what ma'am told like uh, during introduction. Uh, I am a student of a fine art. So uh, side by side, I opened one of my company. You can call startup, uh, where I can uh, like sell my design, sell my design in the sense through T-shirt. And the company name is the Coop Dot In. You can visit. Uh, all of the designs by me actually uh, my intention is that uh, i want to employ it like women women employment okay i i need so currently there is a 16 women employer working with my company and i have in my mind ki within a 2020 end of 2021 it will be increased to 60 so i mean side by side i am doing both the things like i am a part of r&d i am architect now in deloitte and Side by side, I'm pursue my hobby also. So yes, uh, that's me. And if you have any question, you can ask me any query regarding. Yeah. Thank you, Sham, for your uh, very much inspiring and uh, useful uh, talk about your uh, journey from PM and to then core company from uh, core to IT and then from IT to R and D. Uh, so this will be very much helpful to our uh, students of first year and second year. So students, you have any query? Uh, you please ask question to uh, Sham. Yes, ma'am. I had a query. Yeah, yeah, yes, I tell him. So what I have thought for myself is that uh, firstly I will opt for an IT company, and after uh, after my B Tech, and then after three to four years. Uh, I will prefer for the PSU exams or some other core sectors or maybe higher studies. So, will it be a good choice? Yes, good choice. So, the thing is that that take your decision at right time. If you are taking your decision right time, there is a no harm with that. Okay. So, yeah, that that's that's the reason. So, if you are in like IT company, like there is a lots of examples. No. The people are in after completing your B Tech, they are in IT sector, normal IT sector. They are doing code kind of things. Okay, after that they are doing MS Master of Science for two years, and they are doing like uh, uh, master degree in uh, data analytics and a master degree in SAP. Okay, and they are doing very good. Okay, we have a lot of example with that, so you can go with that. There's no harm with that, but. Don't wait for that. We no, I will take a chance for next year or next year. So do quickly whatever you will do. So just take the market, what market is doing currently, and take your decision. But there is no harm with that. Okay, but uh, will it be a problem being not touch with in the, with the subjects? If I go for higher education or core sectors. No, no, there is a no problem. See, like uh, in our college, okay, whatever the lab. We did okay. Whatever the transistor, whatever the capacitor, whatever the resistor, we have seen. And when you join the post sector, you can see there is a huge difference. We have to deal live one with the deal with the current things. Okay, so you learn gradually. You like so you will get a kind of training. Company will give you training. Company, it's not like that. Whatever the bookish knowledge you have, and you have not any hands on, and they are like. Uh, Like he okay, do whatever you want to do. No, it's not a way. They will train you before you they work. Okay, because whatever you will work, this is your life in environment. Okay, so anybody don't want to do like any wrong with that. Okay, so people will train you. So there is a uh, no such things like that. Okay. Okay, so three to four years will be good for for switching to IT to core. Not three to four years. Uh, you twenty-two months or twenty-four months, two years within a two years, not more than that. Okay. Okay. Thank 22, you. Twenty-two, twenty-two months to thirty-five months, not more than that. Okay. Okay. Any more question from the participants? Any more question? I think there is uh, no question. Uh, so. Uh, nice to hear about your startup, Sham. 
and uh, thank you best of luck for your startup uh, and uh, uh, i think uh, within few years uh, you will be a good entrepreneur also okay, okay. so best of luck sham thank you thank you and thank you to everyone to hear me to listen me okay and yes i wish you good luck for you and just i want to say one thing to all of you to all of you guys whatever you want to do do with your uh, like take your right decision and right time it you will be huge one day mark you mark my word whatever you want to do take a decision at right time don't wait for that that's for me yeah thank you okay thank you once again Next, Bye. without wasting time, uh, let's move on to our uh, last uh, speaker, uh, Miss uh, Quail Dash. Quail, uh, are you there? Hello, Quail. Can you hear me? Quail, Quail is uh, present. Uh, I think so because. She has confirmed me that she is online. Okay. Uh, well, are you there? Well, please turn on your audio and video. She just raised your uh, uh, her hand. I mean, she want to say something. I guess. Uh, well, if you have any technical issue, you can put your uh, you can put that in our chat box. Uh, no, you are not audible. Yes, yes, okay, we'll wait. Well, just unmute your mic. Try to unmute your mic and then say. When has joined, it is showing. Well, please turn on your mic. She has left the meeting. She also having some network issue.
ma'am yes i i have talked to her uh, actually the volume of the meeting is so large that uh, it is showing unable for her to join by uh, through his uh, through her uh, mobile uh, phone so she is trying to join uh, in laptop and uh, she has told to uh, just wait for one minute to okay, turn on okay. the laptop okay we will wait we will wait no problem hmm. has has she joined uh, probably not uh, oh yeah But she has she has joined faculty is showing yeah she has joined probably guest faculty is showing well can you hear me Will please turn on your mic. Yeah, ma'am, she is coming. She is coming. Okay. Uh, I have I have just talked to her. She is coming. Hello, hello, Quinn. Yeah, hi, ma'am. Yes, yes. Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome, you, Quinn. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, uh, let me introduce Quinn. Uh, Miss Quinn Dash, born and brought up in Kolkata, and living in Garden City for last twenty-five years. 
she is inquisitive to learn and she is diving into new challenges thumbs up her professional journey so far as uh, she would take life as it comes she joined wipro technologies being the first company offered that she received as a java developer followed by an opportunity to work in their big data team she loves to travel a big time foodie and a dog lover uh, she sings and paint during her free time as it helps in clearing her mind she believes that uh, we can do little when alone but together we can do a lot more welcome you quel and over to you thank you ma'am thank you for such warm welcome and kind words uh, hello all good afternoon um i can see some of my favorite professors in there in the meeting as well but can you please confirm whether i am audible or not because i had yes. a very bad experience at the first uh, time please you are audible you please okay. continue you are clearly yeah. audible okay so uh, i graduated in 2018 and uh, in the ec branch and uh, i got my first offer from wipro technologies uh, being the like that was the first company to visit our campus and uh, fortunately and by good luck uh, i cracked it and got the opportunity to work in uh, wipro technologies for around 2.5 years and currently i'm working in infosys limited as a big data developer now coming to the journey that uh, most of you are going to start like uh, in college like this four years which path to choose and uh, what would be the correct path whether it will eventually like result in a good outcome or not uh, trust me we all have faced it in some day or the other so uh starting with electronics and communications like there might be some questions like i am currently in the software engineering part then why have i opted for the electronics and communication engineering department so the answer to this is like at the first place i was very scared of programming like during the start of the, my college life i was very scared of programming i had no idea how to crack like how to write thousands of lines of java codes python codes or scala codes i had no idea about it what are the various algorithms how how my brain is going to process it i just had no idea so i thought that uh, i took references from various of my seniors and they suggested me like you can go for electronics and communication and get a taste of like get the best of both worlds you can also learn the core things the various instrumentation part communication part as well as you will get to learn your software part as well so you will get the taste of both the parts and then you can decide that okay fine uh, i can go this way or that way so starting with like uh, electronics and communication the first initial years it was all good all fine i got depth into the knowledge of communication and had good marks also but the thing is when i got the opportunity for the campusing and the offer letter got inside my mail that time i had to decide that whether i should take up this job or shall i wait and you know pursue my career in uh, core subjects you know go forward with mtech or you know go with the r&d now at that moment i was like that uh, i mean i was totally confused and i had suggestions from so many people that it even confused me more like what to decide like whether it would be a right decision or not but yes to be honest uh, it is very important to be like independent you know so at that moment i realized that what if i take this job and pursue my career in software engineering and let's have a taste in it like how it works like so many like thousands and thousands of engineers are going into the it industries and none of them are failing right everyone is like growing only so i was like let's give it a try and get into the industry and have a taste of it also i want to mention about one plus point that is there are various mncs which will give you an opportunity to prepare for the gate as well like 
why I joined Wipro Technology? First of all, it's a very well-known MNC. Second, it was the first offer that I got, and I did. And that time, campusing was a difficult uh, like uh, trial that was going on. So I thought, let's not waste any more minute thinking of what can happen next and take this opportunity. Third, they offered like they offered a course in Vix Pilani for M Tech. So. If you want to pursue your career, like if you want to have the satisfaction that yeah, I have a job, and at the same time you can also prepare for your masters, then that's a good deal, right? So I didn't waste any more time. I just joined Wipro Technology after my college, and uh, there I worked as Java developer for like 1.5 years. And uh, eventually, while working with Java, like various other technology popped in, like Hibernate. MVC, MySQL, Oracle, Unix, shell, shell scripting, about which we didn't even hear. And at that moment, I was when I was working, and obviously, you need to understand one thing that nobody knows everything. We all are learning. So when you get into the industry or inside a project, they will all prepare you for it. Just like in college, in the first semester, the subject that you will have. You will not have any idea the first day, right? Our professors will prepare you with all the resources and whatever knowledge they have. Similar way in the software industries as well. For the project that you will be tagged in, you will get the resources and the help from your friends and colleagues, and you will eventually like stand in the same point. So, after working for 1.5 years as a Java developer, I got this opportunity to work in a big data team. Now, big data, as it sounds. It's a huge thing. It's a huge thing. Like we often wonder, right? Like uh, if, if, like just to give you an example or a taste of what is big data. Like uh, if you have seen that if you are scrolling, we spend most of our time daily like activities is includes like scrolling to Facebook, Instagram, or various other social networking sites. And you will see if you see something and if you hit the like button. Next day also you hit the like button. Same similar eyes, like similar things pops up. If you have noticed, I think you will get to know that similar thing or the same uh, same category thing pops up every time. Now how come Facebook knows what you like? You are not giving any idea, right? It's just the essence of big data in it. Like the, every time you see a gadget in Mintra, suppose you will see that gadget pops up in Facebook. That the gadget pops up in your Instagram profile. Exactly same thing. How come Instagram knows that you saw something in Mintra or Amazon or any other portal? That's the essence of big data, and that's how data is traveling from one platform to to another platform and has every possible information of the users that are using them. So when I got into this project with no idea of what big data is, because at the first project I was Java developer, I had some information i had some knowledge about java from school and from college but big data it was a complete like greek to me what was it about and how will i be able to you know stand like what will i tell my manager if i cannot give him a good uh, like output so but eventually you need to work hard and you need to continuously learn because there is no like you cannot lag it you cannot lag behind in IT industry, that I can assure you. So once I got into this big data, I got to learn a lot of things, like all the practical things that are going around us make made sense at that point. I we, we never knew what is happening with us unless we are dealing with it. So that's how I started working into the big data technologies such as Apache Spark, Hive, HDFS. Uh, big scope and uh, other like programming languages as Python, Scala, and then with working and uh, more knowledge and more requirement, I thought of getting a better opportunity. I got a better opportunity from Infosys Limited, and I joined there. And now I am in the DNA unit, data and analytics unit, and working as a data engineer over there. So. Yeah, that's kind of brief up about my uh, achievement that I have attempted, like I have received so far. So yes, 
it's obviously not a very smooth journey uh ip industry why ip number one is there is a demand okay if someone tells you there is no job in it it's a misconception there is like people are waiting to hire you in it if and only if you meet their requirement that is you have the technical depth knowledge then only you will be able to get into it and uh, most importantly you know what uh, about the it thing is that in kolkata i have seen like most of the speakers have already mentioned about like staying in kolkata and you know somehow or the other it is definitely not the place in kolkata at least it has not been also and not in coming 5 years i can see something good happening i am currently posted in bangalore right now so and that is the it boom as you know so in if you want to achieve something if you want that continuous growth in your path in your career then you need to travel outside your comfort zone you have to there's no way out that you can be in your comfort zone that no i'll stay at home i'll travel this i'll travel the, like that and i won't be able to take up new technologies learn new things then that is not going to take your career anywhere safe so if you are demanding like i want a proper growth in my life and achieve something in the near future then i can tell you that software engineering is the path it provides you a golden path to get where you want but you need to learn continuously that is the only thing and also it's not that your like journey for uh, core subjects will end if you after like after even like 2 to 3 years if you feel that no i need to pursue my masters on the technology that i have worked in but uh, like i am working in you can even do that there is no age limit i guess for the masters in in such cases so uh, so yeah so if you think that uh, you need to build up your career fast so i think software engineering is a way so that is my journey that sums up my journey so far so if you have any question you can uh, Thank you for. Um, well, uh, may I ask you a question? Yes. <laughs> uh, actually, I am asking this question on behalf of the students, uh, first year and second year. Uh, actually, uh, in our for all the four years, we mm-hmm. are uh, studying uh, many subjects like. Uh, communication system and whatever be the different genre subjects of issue we are studying but actually when you go to the it industry a totally different thing we have to uh, uh, cope up with or we have to study we have to learn now many times i have uh, faced this question from uh, our ec students so far subjects we are studying in four, uh, in a whole four years then what are the benefits of those subjects if i join the software industry then i should join csc and it in the beginning of my uh, first year then what is the uh, necessity or what is the effectiveness of 